1979, a Belgian civil engineer named Robert Boval was waiting at Heathrow Airport in London for his flight. He was heading to Sudan to work on a project. While waiting for the flight, he was reading a book titled The Serious Mystery by Robert Temple. The book discussed the beliefs of tribes in Africa known as the Dogon tribes, currently located in Mali. These tribes have been performing rituals and dances every 50 years for thousands of years, mimicking the movement of the serious star in the sky. They believed these rituals allowed them to communicate with the dead in the sky. Interestingly, Sirius is a binary star, meaning it consists of two stars, not one, known as Sirius A and Sirius B. Sirius B orbits around Sirius A every 50 years, which means the Dogon tribe knew this secret and performed their rituals every 50 years based on this cycle. Sirius, one of the brightest stars, belongs to a group known as the Great Dog. Even more astonishing is that Sirius B was discovered only 150 years ago and cannot be seen with a naked eye. A telescope is needed, and it was only photographed in 1970. So, how did the Dogon know the movement of this star, which requires astronomical knowledge from tribes that appear simple and primitive? Here, Robert Temple, the book's author, expressed his belief that the astronomical information the Dogon possessed must have been passed down over thousands of years from the ancient Egyptians, and that the secret of the Sirius star should be sought in the history of ancient Egypt. This book led Robert Boval on a research journey that took more than 10 years of his life, culminating in a theory that could rewrite all of Egyptian history. He concluded that Egypt, with its Nile and pyramids, is a reflection of the sky on Earth. Robert Boval was born in Alexandria, and when he was 12, he moved with his family to London, where he graduated as a civil engineer and continued his life. Like millions of others, the pyramids occupied part of his thoughts. In the early 1980s, during a visit to the Egyptian Museum in Tahir Square, he saw a picture of the pyramids hanging on the wall. Robert stood in front of the picture, contemplating it. It was a photo taken from an airplane, showing the pyramids from a high perspective about a kilometer away. While standing in front of the picture, three questions came to his mind that puzzled him. The first question was, why are there three pyramids? For example, why not two? Why not four or five? The known answer in the references is that the pyramids are the tombs of the kings of the 4th dynasty, built around 2500 BC, and that these pyramids belong to the kings Khufu, Khafre, and Menkaura. But what raises questions is that Khufu had a son named King Jedifri, who built his pyramid in the Abu Rawash area, about 10 kilometers away. So why didn't he build his pyramid with them on the Giza Plateau? Menkaura had a son named King Shepsiskaf, also from the 4th dynasty. So why didn't he build his tomb with them and instead built his tomb 18 kilometers away in Saqqara? The second question is why is the third pyramid much smaller than the first and second? The third pyramid is 65 meters high and about half the size of the first and second pyramids. The most popular explanation in the references is that King Menkaura built a smaller pyramid to reduce costs. However, this explanation is also unconvincing because Menkaura's pyramid contains a large number of massive red granite stones weighing more than 10 tons each. The red granite comes from a thousand kilometers away in Aswan, and cutting and transporting it is very difficult and expensive. So, while Menkaura made a smaller pyramid, he also used higher quality and more expensive materials. Why didn't they just use limestone if they wanted to save on costs? The third and final question, which was the most troubling for Robert, is why isn't the third pyramid aligned with the first and second pyramids? If we draw a line passing through the centers of the first and second pyramids, we'll find it far from the third, as if the third pyramid was built not in its correct place. Some explain this by saying that the soil's geology was not suitable and that if the pyramid had been aligned in that location, it would have caused subsidence and collapses, but no one has provided strong evidence on this matter. For example, no one has conducted a soil study and said there would have been subsidence if the pyramid had been built here. This was just an assumption. 
These three points puzzled Robert. Why are there three pyramids on the Giza Plateau? Why is Menkaure's pyramid smaller compared to the first and second pyramids? Why isn't the third pyramid aligned with the first and second pyramids? For years, Robert was puzzled by these questions and wasn't convinced by the existing explanations. As a civil engineer, he was sure that the design of the pyramids, in terms of size and location, happened all at once according to a single design. This means the pyramids were all drawn on one plan at the same time. Not that one king built his pyramid, then the next king decided to build his pyramid next to his father's, and so on. No, it was all at the same time. Like designing a residential city where you plan the streets, buildings, schools, and hospitals simultaneously on the map. Surely there was a master plan for the pyramids, but where was it? Robert hadn't found an answer until he was on a business trip for a project in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. During the weekend, he went on a safari trip with his friends in the desert. One night, while walking with his French friend, who had knowledge of star constellations, the friend pointed to a particular star group in the sky. He said it consisted of three stars, but they were not in a straight line. The smallest was slightly offset. Robert looked at where his friend was pointing and exclaimed. His friend asked, What's wrong? Robert replied, I see the pyramids of Giza in the sky. Finally, Robert found the key to solving the mystery, the stars of Orion's Belt. Orion's Belt is a star cluster consisting of three stars, known as the Belt of Orion because it's part of a larger constellation known as Orion, representing a strong figure holding prey. At that moment, the vision became clear to Robert Boval. He found that the pyramids follow the pattern of Orion's belt with astonishing precision. This explained to him the sizes of the pyramids and the distances between them. The three stars of Orion's belt are Alnatak, Alnalam, and Mintaka, matching in size and relative brightness with the three pyramids of Giza. A line passing through the center of Alnatak and Alnalam with Mintaka slightly offset matches the alignment of the pyramids of Giza with Khufu, Khafre, and Menkaure. This unified plan was what he was looking for, a stunning revelation and the starting point. Robert Boval wanted to discuss the idea with several Egyptologists, so he sent a letter to the director of the Egyptology department at the British Museum at the time, Dr. Harry James. James's response was that the alignment between the pyramids and Orion was merely a coincidence. Naturally, this was a very discouraging response, but Robert did not give up. He tried again with the well-known British Egyptologist Dr. Edwards, who was enthusiastic about the idea and encouraged him to continue his research. Robert did not stop there. Since the pyramids of Giza were built in the pattern of Orion's belt, why not look for structures aligned with other celestial bodies? He studied the pyramid texts, which are some of the oldest sacred Egyptian writings found in the pyramids of Unas, Teti, and other pyramids in Saqqara. These texts, written in the inner chambers of the pyramids, talk about the king's transition to the afterlife. One of the things that caught his attention while studying the texts was that they talked about a celestial watery path like a river in the sky. For example, in one part the text says, Will you carry me and lift me to the winding watery path? Will you make me reside among the gods and the immortal stars? In another part, the text says, The winding watery path has overflowed, and I am crossing to the eastern side of the sky, to the place where the gods made me, where I was born anew as a young man. The text spoke of a winding watery path in the sky and the king's journey from west to east to dwell among the immortal stars. The ancients believed that the stars were the dwelling place of the gods. Many Egyptologists saw that the winding watery path referred to the Milky Way, which appears as a winding river in the sky and can be seen with the naked eye from the Earth's surface on certain nights. There is a very important text in the pyramid texts which states that Egypt is a reflection of the heavens. Most who read this sentence interpreted it metaphorically as a sign of beauty and serenity, but Robert saw that it meant a literal reflection of the sky, that Egypt is a true image of the heavens, not just a metaphorical one. His study revealed that Egypt, with its Nile and seven massive pyramids from the 4th dynasty, 
is a reflection of the sky. The Nile River is a terrestrial representation of the Milky Way, the Celestial Nile, and the seven pyramids on Earth correspond to the seven stars in the sky, matching their size, brightness, and relative position to the Milky Way. The Abu Rawash Pyramid corresponds to the star Saif. The three pyramids of Giza correspond to Orion's belt. The Zayet al Aryan Pyramid corresponds to the star Bellatrix, and the two Dashur pyramids correspond to the stars of the Pleiades. Thus the meaning of the pyramid text statement that Egypt is a reflection of the heavens is realized. The ancient Egyptians particularly revered the Orion constellation, which they called Sa, and the Sirius star, which they called Soptet, as its appearance was associated with the flooding of the Nile, the source of life. Astronomically, Sirius is connected with the Orion constellation, which appears before it. Religiously, Sirius was associated with Isis, Orion with Osiris, and the stars of the Pleiades with Set, Osiris's brother and his killer in the well-known myth. This theory leads to a very important conclusion. The pyramids were not built in isolation as we previously thought, but rather their design was conceived by the same mind at the same time. They were part of a grand engineering plan based on religious beliefs, spatial considerations, and very precise astronomical knowledge. From the beginning, it was planned to have seven pyramids at these locations under a single project design conceived at the same time. The execution may have taken many years, a hundred or two hundred years more or less, that's not the issue. The idea that King Khufu decided to build his pyramid on the Giza Plateau then Khafre decided to build his next to it, and so on, with each designing and building their pyramid in their own way, is clearly not true. The idea that the bent pyramid had an error in its angles during construction, leading to the building of the red pyramid next to it, is also clearly not true. We will see throughout the series that there is no such thing as a mistake or coincidence. Things recorded in books as design or construction errors were not errors they were designed to be that way. It was indeed intended to have two pyramids at Dasher, the red pyramid corresponding to the star Aldebaran and the bent pyramid corresponding to the star Elnath from the Taurus constellation. Aldebaran is defined in references as a red giant because over millions of years, the hydrogen in it turned into helium, accompanied by a significant increase in temperature that made its surface turn red. Do you think it's a coincidence that the pyramid corresponding to the red star Aldebaran, unlike the other pyramids, is built of reddish limestone, hence the name Red Pyramid? I don't think it's a coincidence, and I believe everything was subject to precise design. After extensive research on the pyramid texts and their relation to the stars, Robert published his theory in an archaeological scientific journal called Discussions in Egyptology. He felt he had done his part in linking the pyramids to the stars and decided to stop at that point. 